course, phase two is unlearn the world. Stop judging the world. Stop trying to analyze and break apart. That can seem uh, a bit scary when you've been trained and taught, or literally you taught yourself, as the Course says, when you taught yourself to, that, that you're, you know, we say people who are, are intelligent and who are good judges, who, who can have maturity in this world, are good judges. You know, they know what to avoid in this world and what to pursue. And the Course comes along and says, wisdom is not judgment. True wisdom is relinquishment of judgment. That's, that's a profound kind of idea. And for me, it's like I was in college for 10 years, and I was kind of going through all this, and degrees and everything, and finally, right before the course came, it was like I just hopped off. I just got to the point where I said, you know, I saw the frustrations of, I'd studied all these different disciplines, I had searched so deeply, and I'd seen all these different underlying assumptions about the world, the physicists and the sociologists had huge different views of the world. <laughs> the chemists and the psychologists, my gosh, you know, the musicians and the artists, you know. What I saw was that there were all these world views, and it's like, how are we ever going to have harmony if, if there's all this variation in, in what the world is? But the Course is like it just cuts through all that. You know, it literally is helping us train our minds to get to that to that true perception where we give up judgment. So, I mean, that's a lot of stuff, and we're throwing it out, but now if things are coming to your mind, like particular things, then that's good, we'll, we'll go with those. What areas. comes to my mind is, uh, in the manual it says, and into this impossible situation, these <laughs> teachers have got to <laughs> sit out here at the business. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah, we're in That's the us. maze. Yeah, we're in the maze. So what's the solution? I mean, um, yeah, but so uh, the mind is so uh, stuck in its pattern. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you, like, okay, I was feeling great for a whole long time, and then I had two days where I just couldn't get my mind to think or it seemed that way. I just couldn't get it out of my pit or whatever it was in. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, is that, I tried whatever I, you know, doing the lessons and whatever, and begging, whatever you go through, help, please, and it just stood there, so then what? Like I mean, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. So what, how do you handle it from there? Go down to the next floor. <laughs> <laughs> Usually that's what a block is. Go up in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Know that it's there. Well, the, well, I don't even know what the block was. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, maybe that's the block. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Zola yesterday about and today I was studying the course and the answer came to me and I hadn't given her the answer yesterday. I was telling her, I said, I've been doing all right except I really raised hell with my with my ego. You know, I even had an excuse. I could talk about where it said in the Bible that Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. I figured he said, get behind me, Satan. He didn't. He says, get behind me, Satan. Doesn't mean anybody. You know? <laughs> I have to not judge my ego either. That was the thing. Because I, I was always judging my ego. Well, he's got to judge him doing this. He's <laughs> been thinking the wrong way. That's judgment. There's no judgment to it. Well, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it's... The Song of Prayer in the Course does say, in a sense, that that's where I read it was in the Song of, song of Prayer. Yeah. When you when you believe you're in this separated world, once again, the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit will seem to at times take a specific form. You know, a lot of us have maybe had inclinations or hunches or maybe even heard a voice or seen a billboard or heard something on the radio or had a friend call us or something that seemed to be very specific and very helpful. And a lot of times, really though. The only thing that um, that you need to have to receive that is is willingness. But a lot of times, a little willingness can seem like a lot. I mean, when the mind seems to be in a stuck spot and it really seems to be blocked. Um, in the rules for decision, you know, Jesus kind of goes through and gives. That's a, a good place to go if you're in a stuck spot because he gives little stepping stones to help Seven the mind. Minutes. Yeah, to help pull pull the mind back from its stuck spot. And one of them is kind of like, one of the middle ones is kind of like, 
at least I can decide how I, I don't like how I feel. Now. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's like the mind is so close to the light and so close to, to Jesus at that point that at least when we, when we can go, yuck, you know, I can at least decide that I don't like how I feel now. And then he'll kind of go on, so I hope that I've been wrong. You know, that I've made a decision in my mind. And I, and I actually hope that I've been wrong about it because I want to then I, I want to see things differently. It kind of leads us out to that point. So that's one way of doing it. But there isn't there isn't any kind of like formula. But when we talk here and we continue going into it, I'm, I, hopefully there'll be more clarity that will you'll be able to kind of inspire you to, to get over the stuck spots. Do you get over them, or do you just wait them out? <laughs> well. <laughs> It's up to you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really just a now kind of proposition. You know, when you were talking about the uh, trade center, you know, and how many stories it's got, I said the other thing that the ego does is keep building higher buildings. <laughs> Going in the other direction. Yeah, right? <laughs> keep building higher buildings, yeah. you know, more floors. Well, I can give you, what I can do is share some experiences from my life because for me, it's been a process of, so I see that my mind is filled with judgments. So I see that my mind is full of attack thoughts. You know, it's like, yuck. You know, the re when you really start to pull away from the distractions, maybe you've been using entertainment or drugs or something, or just busyness. You've, you've made your body so busy because you don't want to look at your mind that you kind of get so busy. When you really start to pull back from it, usually the first experience is, it's yuck. My mind is a mess. You know, this is a big job. I don't even, I, I want to go back out to the distractions because the mind feels so attached to these attack thoughts. That's where the guilt comes in. It, it's not attached to the real thoughts. Those are buried over in the basement. So really forgiveness is what we need to talk about. You know, what is forgiveness and, and how do we really come to a clearer understanding of forgiveness? Because that's the way that we, we come out of this thing. One way of coming at forgiveness is the idea of purpose. Because remember we just talked about the form content distinction. That purpose is always in the mind. And what happens is, is that when we perceive ourselves as these little teeny bodies in this vast world, we've just splintered our mind into hundreds and hundreds and thousands of different functions for purposes. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a medical technician, I'm on the board of such and such, you know, uh, I'm a, or I'm a grand grandmother, I'm um, so many years old, you know, it just goes on and on and on. We all have these different things. Then we keep, it even goes further. Um, I've, I've got uh, good um, reasoning ability, I'm terrible athletically, um, my right arm is a little bit stiff and sore, you know, it, it, we break the body into different, we see the body in different lights, we, in different functions. Um, it goes even more minutely. It's like you see, we've just taken these images and we've fragmented. What's a hand for? You know, what's a a leg for? You know, if you think about certain different body parts, you can think about different functions. So we've splintered this idea called purpose into many, 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 many functions. Now the good news is, though, forgiveness is so simple. I mean, you know how Jesus will say many times in the course, "This is a very simple course." If you do not understand it, you are interpreting against it. <laughs> you know what he's saying. But it's a very, very simple course. And that's what I've discovered, you know, as I've studied the course for years, it's like the deeper I've really gone into it and, and looked at these false concepts in my own mind and, and just let go, let go, let go, it's like it just gets simpler and simpler. It's like crystal clear. Because what happens is it just merges, it's like your life merges into one purpose. And that is the purpose of forgiveness. In other words, in the workbook he says, you know, you have a function here. You, you're here for a reason. Some of you might have seen Oprah Winfrey where she says, I think I'm here for a reason. You know, <laughs> to, to bring love and to bring healing. And literally, that's, that's our function. Forgiveness, healing. That is our one purpose. That's what's going to lead us out of the maze, you know. Now, what happens is, for me it's been something that's like it's grown and grown and grown, where the deeper I've gotten in touch with this purpose, and the more it's become like the center of my life, it's become my joy, you know. The more I really hold on to this one purpose, the simpler things get, 
and the more things just start to ma almost like magically click in, you know. I mean, I I lived a life I could say when, probably the most complicated it got was I think back to when I was in college for ten years and I was in grad school and writing papers and trying to do all these things and had a relationship going, trying to juggle ten things at once, and and I think. What's happened in the last, since the mid-80s for me, is like my life has just gotten very simple, but it's a simplicity that's come like from shifting my mind. So it's not like I've tried to change the form first and then get a simple mind. Because we, I mean, that's been tried for centuries, you know, give away all your possessions, or do this, do that, fast, or you know, something like that. Somehow magically, if we, if we do certain behaviors or rituals that will our minds will get immediately get clear and we'll be in the kingdom of heaven. But just it doesn't work that way. It's almost like it's the reverse way. We have to we have to look at all these concepts that we hold of ourselves and we have to, to see the falsity of the concept and then kind of like leap out of it. So that um, you know, that's been the experience for me, has been like, you know, I've I've kind of like withdrawn my identity from, for example, the idea of career and profession. <clears throat> you know, I started examining that in the mid-80s as a concept, you know, really looking at it. It was very linear. <laughs> it was very much projected into the future. The Course is teaching me, you know, that the future is imagined, you know, and to give up your pursuits and everything, but it's like, wait a minute, everybody's got to have a career. You know, <laughs> this is not a concept, this is, this is important, but you know, I started to really examine it and really look at it and really question it and then like was able to start to just say, okay, I don't know where this is going, but I'll trust, I mean that's the key word, I'll trust and, and I don't know how you're going to use me and I don't know how things are going to work out, but I, but I know I'm, I'm feeling this purpose starting to grow in me and I want to follow it. So that was like one example. You know, it, it, it takes place in all of our areas of, of our life too, like relationships is another one, you know. Everyone who comes to this place forms special relationships, the Course says. But what are special relationships? What's a, a modern, good John Bradshaw word? Codependence? You know, that's what a special relationship is, it's a good old codependent <laughs> relationship. Where, you know, where you need that other person, where you, you want to get your needs met. You know, a lot of the workshops Still, nowadays, if you listen to the words, you know, how to get your needs met from your partner, you know, that's a, that's still a codependent <laughs> relationship, because when the partner up and leaves or decides I'm not going to meet those needs, then where are you, you know, you're back to, what do I do now? So, what the Course does with this new purpose is like, even when we, when we start to shift our purpose and give it to the Holy Spirit, even our perceptions of relationships start to alter and start to shift, in a big way. <laughs> we could probably go around and just talk about, you know, the, the different ways that it's happened. There's a lot, and a lot of times there's a lot of upheaval because if you're, if you're, you've been in this pattern, heavily rooted pattern for a long time and then you start to pull your mind away from it, the ego is fits. It's grief work. Yeah. I've lost myself. I have nothing to live for. It used to be this way. Now I have nothing. What can I do? <sighs> yeah, and unless we have a function, and that's why I keep bringing back forgiveness or, or purpose, because we have to have something positive to grab onto. You know, if, as we start to lay aside these self-concepts that we've constructed, these little tiny false selves that we've made to be so important, you know, we've forgotten spirit, we've made these self-concepts, as you really start to work with the Course and you start to examine these concepts, the ego is shrinking in there. Because ego is saying, well, you gave up that, you, you, let, you saw something else. If you keep letting go of your concepts, there's going to be nothing left. And the ego's version of that is, when you go to the basement, you're going into the void. <laughs> the ego describes the light as nothingness. <laughs> and that's why, when you start doing your inner work a lot of times, that's why all... Take your flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You better have Jesus in, with, with, in hand when you do it. But, but that's why it can be so painful. You know, when you start really looking at your mind, because you're starting to look at these concepts and these false beliefs, and the ego is in there advising that you know you better stop, don't go within, you know, stay outside and stay distracted. So that's the idea of purpose. There, 
Another thing he says is that a single unified purpose will stabilize your perception. 